So we are back uh, with the Situation Room and after Russia we are uh, going to Mexico, so quite, um, quite another region of the, of the planet. I'm going to talk to Arturo Castellan from uh, Mix Festival. Um, hi Arturo, welcome. Um, can you hear us? Uh, yes, yes, I can hear you. Hola. Yeah, perfect. So, hola, hi, welcome. Um, it's great to to have you here. Um, let's uh, dive into this. Um, could you tell us about uh, about? Uh, can you introduce the festival uh, mix, and can you tell us about the history of of the festival? Oh well, yes. Um, our festival uh, Mix Mexico uh, is twenty five years old. Right. It's uh, the most um, the oldest. A film festival in, in Mexico City and um, well it's the first one about uh, sexual diversity in, yeah. in Hispanic America so um, it was born from an idea of um, Sherry Freelot and Edna Campos and myself yeah. in 1996 because we were very interested in, in uh, finding, in that moment, we, we wanted to find uh, images of sexual diversity in our cinema. Yeah. It was very difficult in that time. I was uh, shocked that I couldn't see myself uh, all over the screens. Mm -hmm. And uh, well, that's, that's what I wanted. Our mission has been changing and, and right now well the, the the mission of the festival is uh, to keep uh, this uh, message of sexual diversity yes. uh, to yes. all, all the audiences in in the world uh, through um, an international event yeah yeah, lovely. Um, it's also um, interesting um, to talk a bit about the particular socio-political context in which the festival takes place. Can you tell us about that? Oh, well, um, these questions were very... In 1997, it was uh, kind of difficult to find uh, images of uh, sexuality in, on the, uh, over the screens. It was also a time, there was the first pandemic we, we, we were uh, facing, uh, the, the AIDS uh, pandemic, and uh, people were not very interested. There were a lot of prejudice against the, the thematics. Uh, we, we went to different, um, um, to different spaces to, to screen yeah. the, the festival, and most of them uh, lived that the festival uh, was uh, was going to be a porn uh, festival. No, they, okay. they didn't have yeah. the idea that sexual yeah. diversity was more than than porn and sex. So uh, we 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 were lucky to find a Cineteca Nacional, for example, and a Bioteca de México at the beginning, and the university, which were the, the first places in which uh, um, in which uh, the festival screened. But that was, uh, for example, the, the idea. The, the other one, uh, on the other side, the, the gay community were also a little bit, uh, um, didn't, they didn't have the trust about this uh -huh. kind of uh, festivals because uh, there were uh, none before. There was uh, not, not, not another kind of event before in, in that uh, idea. And most of the gay places were owned by straight owners, so they didn't really want to, to invest in, in the mm -hmm. idea of a community and, and uh, less in an idea of a cultured community, no? a, a, yeah. a, a gay community interested in art and cinema. Yeah, yeah, right. Um, can we talk a bit about the colonial past of of Mexico and how did that uh, complicate um, the 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 history of LGBTQ communities in the region? Well, I, I think that um, 
it has a lot to do with uh, with the idea that mm -hmm. people has about sexual diversity because here in mexico uh, the conquest uh, brought uh, the uh, the catholicism no yeah. mexico is a very catholic country and a uh, well at the at the let, let's talk about the pre-hispanic in the pre-hispanic yeah. cultures uh, some of them, the most important, the Aztec ones, for example, the, the Aztec Empire that was uh, conquered by the Spaniards, was a, a was a homophobic empire. In fact, no, mm -hmm. they 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 weren't very uh, well. They, they were horrible against um, homosexual uh, activities and homosexual persons. There there was a little bit of cannibalism and uh, sacrifices and everything. Uh -huh. uh, there were another cultures uh, the south of, of the country that were uh, more inclusive no At, uh, for example in Oaxaca, for example in uh, Yucatan uh, uh, the Mayan culture was uh, more uh, more inclusive yeah. but the, the Aztec was was not so um, there was not uh, freedom when the Spaniards came but uh, th there were another kind of rules that also uh, um, uh, that that also were against the the, the homosexual persons. No, that there wasn't a homosexual community in that moment. No, but but it happened. And there are some um, news and there are some studies that uh, talk about um, certain uh, brothels, male yeah. brothels for uh, the um, for the soldiers for the spaniard soldiers and uh, this special uh, brothel that was in the in the historical center in the in the historical center here in mexico city uh, was uh, run by a person called a uh, uh, carnita no yeah. yeah and when they found when they found it they, they decided to, to take her to the bonfire. So that's uh, one of the news that we have about the, the, the way they treated homosexuals in the colony period. Yeah. Um, so yes, so you mentioned that this is the 25th anniversary of the festival. This is like a particularly long time uh, for a queer film festival to run uh, without interruptions. And I'm sure that um, throughout time, a lot has changed. How did this new challenge of the pandemic affect your work? Oh, well, uh, it caught us uh, with, the, with the fingers on the door. <laughs> <laughs> we were, yeah, uh, the, the festival takes uh, place in May, so oh, God, in yeah. March they, they closed the CD. No, they they closed. Uh, they, they came the quarantine, and then we had to to decide to move. The no, we already had a catalog, and yeah. it was it was great that uh, last year we were at the Berlinale. And uh, we uh, talked with several distributors and artists, mm -hmm. and it helped a lot uh, uh, because they were very comprehensive about about what was happening here in Mexico City and well in the world. And uh, well, the, the the problems we had to face is that some sponsorship uh, failed, for example. Um, and some of the, the the movies we wanted to, to screen uh, were not possible in, in some moment to, to, to keep in the program yeah. because um, because there were rele release dates. Some of the films changed the release dates uh, for this year, for example, or, or decided to get released once the, the cinemas opened. So it, it was uh, kind of difficult, but very, very interesting too, because we, we uh, took the festival to, um, to the streaming, for example. Uh -huh. We, we yes. were streaming in three different, three different pages, no? Uh, one, uh, our Facebook page, and a, uh, one from the government, and one from the, um, 
culture here in Mexico City. Yeah. So it, it yeah. was very a very interesting experience. Um, once the the cinemas opened, uh, we decided to to have the festival. It, it was it happened in October, okay. and it was great because. Um, we were allowed only uh, 30% of the uh, of the seats available no? and uh, per per uh, per cinema but uh, there were uh, uh, sold out there were a lot of sold out screens mm, that's great to hear um, yeah 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 the, the the audience was very responsive but well the, it, it it didn't work as, as it should because of the, the restrictions and, and everything. But uh, we were in all our our screening um, in our venues, in our screening venues. We got them all. That was terrific. We were at the Teatro de la Ciudad, which is a beautiful theater in, in mm -hmm. the historical center. It's... Uh, it's uh, a wonderful space for premieres. And uh, we were at Cineteca Nacional, which uh, recently stopped time out uh, about the, the most beautiful cinemas in the world. And we were also in Cinepolis, which is a very important change, uh, a market a change of films in the world. Yeah. So, um, we also had a lot of communities screenings in, in different spaces, in different art spaces. And we got every kind of, of people. Yeah, that uh, yeah, that's lovely. Um, now this also ties in a bit with my next question, which is uh, regarding networking. Um, are you still able to uh, to network in these times? Uh, are you able to reach out to other queer film festivals? Uh, how is your relationship with uh, with with queer filmmakers in this time and and yeah how do you how do you manage these yeah rather challenging times well yes uh 25 years ago when, when we were starting the, the festival the festival couldn't have been possible uh, without the the burn without the birth of the internet mm -hmm. no for yeah. for where uh, working in a, in a network for us is is vital for us, no? It's a, it's a question, uh, it's a very important thing. So we were very used to work uh, through, okay. through these kind of sessions and uh, these kind of uh, uh, emailing and, and everything. So it was kind of natural for us to, to, to move to the, to the, um, uh, to the internet, uh, to, to move to the, um, to these Zooms, to these uh, sessions, to these uh, virtual screenings. Yeah, yeah, great. Um, let's talk about uh, this very interesting and beautiful uh, thing that um, in the recent, let's say, decade, um, there is really a lot of very interesting, uh, very powerful um, films detailing um, LGBTQ lives and LGBTQ experiences coming from Latin America and they are doing very, very well. They are really able to connect um, with audiences here at the Teddy as well in the recent years in the different categories. Every year we had uh, some some winners from, from Latin America. Uh, what do you think? What is the um, behind this phenomenon? What drives this? Oh, well, um, I think the, the the country right now is opening to, to democracy. You know? there, there were a lot of changes from 25 years ago to, to these dates. You know? the, the government changed uh, from, uh, to two different parties. The, the first one was a conservative one, which um, Strange, it, it was strange, but uh, but it was very open about the, the thematics. And under that uh, conservative party, uh, there were a lot of uh, persons, uh, there were a lot of directors working on sexual diversity thematics. 
uh, as as you as you uh, have noticed, and I think it it had a lot to do with the uh, with the birth of a new democracy, of a new way to understand mm -hmm. yeah. uh, freedom here here in Mexico, and. Um, to see that the, the freedom of speech was very important, uh, that uh, the film format was very was necessary, was was a need for for the construction of a new country, and mm -hmm. um, it, it, it helped a lot. No, it, 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 it's it's wonderful. No, the, what I'm going to say, I, I think it's it's one of the reasons that I that the Teddy Award uh, makes me inspired, that, that inspires a lot to, to the persons here in, in, in Mex Mix Mexico. And is that uh, in 2000, um, first I, I, I was invited as a, as a jury for the Teddy Award. And two years uh, later, uh, there was a fantastic film that uh, that was called uh, Mil Nubes de Paz, 1000 uh, Clouds of Peace, which won the Teddy Award. No, it was uh, very important for gay uh, filmmaking here in Mexico, for queer filmmaking, because the government wasn't uh, interested in making films about uh, queer or queer persons. Yeah. Uh, the authorities, no, the, the film authorities in, in that year, they, they were telling terrible things, a very homophobic commentaries about it, but uh, they had to um, support that film so that it could get into the Berlinale competition. And that then when it won the, the, the award, it was kind of a revolution. After that, they decided to support the, the first gay, uh, the gay theme films, no? But uh, that, that was the, the reason, no? The, 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 the influence that the Berlinale and the Teddy Award had over, over uh, Mexican film. Yeah, I mean, that's that's wonderful to hear. And I mean, it's just amazing that every year there are so many interesting, powerful, intimate and very moving titles uh, coming from from the from the whole region of, of uh, Latin America. Um, now we talked about these films. Um, what do you think how the pandemic affects these filmmakers and and how will the queer film landscape um, how will it shape the queer film landscape, this this ongoing pandemic? Well, that, I, I think that the first, um, the first problem, the first uh, trouble that the, the pandemic uh, caused is that um, there are cuttings to, to economies here in Mexico. There are a lot yeah. of cuttings to culture. For example, there are uh, less films um being made right now so um that was a, a big problem no? that during yeah. the pandemic there were a lot of discussions about a uh, about this a new kind of productions from the the government the government is the the principal the the principal producer uh, of film in mexico so um it was a very uh, problematic uh, thing. It was a very problematic time for, for film right now. So I think um, uh, film film artists are facing uh, new rules. We, we yeah. are going to, to see where are they going to to, to get us. And, and this is going to be like the, the first year over these new rules, over these new laws and, and and uh, ruling for filming here in Mexico, I think uh, that thematics are going are not going to be touched uh, right now. The, the government is interested in in uh, helping um, some voices that were not uh, represented in, in the screens and in the and in the arts, but um, but we don't know. No, uh, there's a lot of uncertainty too. Um, right now, most of the uh, LGBT films, LGBT, LGBT short films that we yeah. screen in Mix Mexico Festival 
are um, from, from independent filmmakers. There okay. are a lot of student and independent uh, filmmakers uh, doing it. They don't need uh, money from the from the state, from the government, yeah. and they do it their work, such as uh, well, um, there were uh, historical names of this kind of artists, like Jaime Humberto Hermosillo, for example, mm -hmm. the director of Doña Linda and her son, who died last year. Uh, he was like a big example of uh, an independent filmmaker. And I think a lot of uh, filmmakers right now are, are taking his example for, for, for sure. making films about LGBT. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's certainly an interesting time for filmmakers as well. And uh, yeah, I'm curious to see how they're going to respond uh, to this pandemic. But... I'm sure, particularly in, in queer cinema, that there will be a lot of interesting and creative um, solutions to to tackle the issues that they have to face. Um, yeah, um, also, I, I wanted to ask you about um, the inclusion of, uh, of indigenous um, communities and, and the representation of, of indigenous people in queer cinema particularly, how do you see um, their representation? Um, do they get um, enough um, space to, to express and, and to, and to um, let their stories to be heard? It's, it's something totally new for cinema, you know? Um, there, there's not a lot of queer representation. There's not a lot of uh, indigenous rep representation. And this mix of, of, of both uh, thematics is completely, completely new. Right now, there's a, there are some examples of films, for example, Carmen Tropical or, or uh, a new one that is coming that it's Nudo Mixteco, uh, but uh, but yes, there are a few, a few of these films. Uh, this is one of the interests right now of the of the government of the in uh -huh. cine. Okay, they're very interested in supporting uh, films made by women and made by indigenous communities. Uh, let, let's hope uh, everything uh, works well. No, the, there's a lot of uh, doubts about it. Because uh, not only because of, of representation, but because of um, the way in which uh, they can uh, be a part of the of the film uh, industry. Yeah. No, the, these are uh, communities which has not been uh, uh, brought to the education, to film education and everything. So there's a lot of uh, to build uh, around uh, in order to get these uh, thematics yeah. in, into the screen. Yeah. Is this something that, um, that's, for instance, um, on the radar of Mix Festival as well to, to try to um, involve these communities? Yes, exactly. We we are just uh, working in order to to have the premiere of this film, Nudo Mixteco, which which is going to to start his um, its um, screenings in international festivals right now. It's directed by a wonderful actress, Angeles Cruz, which is an in, indigenous actress and which is very interested in, in talking about these uh, thematics and everything. Right now we're, we are working with her producer, Lucia Carreras, which has been uh, behind some of the most important uh, films uh, known, uh, known abroad. So uh, we're very excited to, to have this film uh, this year and uh, well, we, we are very uh, excited also to have a contest. We are working with um, Pierrot Films, which is giving awards to the ending of uh, short films, to, to the, um, to the post-production yeah, post of uh, yeah. short films. So we are inviting uh, every community to, to participate in, in this. This is a, 
address for, for Mexican uh, Mexican directors. But I think it, 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 it is a good space, no? It is a good space to, to end your movie and to screen it uh, in, in a well-regarded festival and uh, to move in, in, the, in, the, in the world of, of international festivals there then. Yeah. Yeah, um, we talked about we talked a lot about um, films and and film screenings. But as I understand, mix festival is is broader. You have many other aspects of of your of your festival as well. Uh, can you talk a bit about these? Oh well, yes. Uh, the the festival it, it has a prize, as as I told you, the the Pierrot Films Prize, for example. It also has a, a part of an editorial. We are um, mm -hmm. publishing a, a yearly magazine uh, about film and sexual diversity. Uh, we are also uh, uh, publishing some, some books of uh, erotic photography, for example. And we are also uh, working uh, for communities. We are uh, giving uh, some of uh, screenings a, um, for um, for people who don't that, who don't get access to, to Mexican cinema, right? In, in, in here in Mexico, Mexico City, and some of uh, other places, uh, these uh, screenings are for free, and some of them happen on the streets, and and we are very very proud of, of this part of the of the festival taking place. And right now we we are also uh, giving in our hybrid format. We are uh, very very happy to have the first masterclass, the first international masterclass, uh -huh. which was given last year by Alfonso Albacete, one of the most important uh, Spanish filmmakers um, about LGBT and who's right now working here in Mexico for his new film. So it was a, a very, uh, a very important, uh, wonderful coincidence. And I think it, it's, it makes that the, um, the festival uh, broadens its aspects, its, um, its places to, to be screened. Yeah. Um, do you think that this is going to be also, you're going to be able to continue all of these things um, with the pandemic in place as well? Oh, let's hope so. We are like, um, well, we, we had like, um, Mexico is a huge, it's a huge country. Yeah. So right now we have our, all our hopes on the new vaccines. Uh, people getting back vaccinated uh, since like a month ago, so it's been slow. But we really hope that um, uh, people feel more uh, secure and, and safe in order to go to cinemas and the second semester. And I think that it will help that our screenings uh, get broader that we can uh, get it to, to more people, not only in Mexico City, but about abroad. Yeah, um, as I was talking to uh, other film festivals as well from around the world, um, all of them pointed out that the big advantage of migrating certain parts of the festival online was that it provided a wider access um, so more people were able to uh, join and follow the screenings and take part in in the online discussions about about the films um, is this something that you also um, experienced um, and are you planning to incorporate um, this uh, more heavy online presence in the future as well Yes, we, we like that uh, a lot. We uh, we were very um, in the in the Mexico in Mexico City. We were working in Mexico City, so the festival was not uh, well known uh, uh, abroad. Uh, so these master classes and everything for the internet and for the web pages. 
and uh, we obtained a new audience. That that yeah. was very very interesting uh, last year. We we got a new audience who were uh, uh, completely stunned by the things that we were screening, by the Mexican films that we were uh, screening through these uh, platforms, and of course uh, about having a national director talking to these new these novel. Um, creators about about having their work in the film having their work in in the screens and everything so yes it was a very a satisfactory um, a very satisfactory work uh, which we made uh, last year and uh, we certainly are very interested in replicating it mm -hmm. no I, I think yeah. we are going to to keep this hybrid format for uh, from this time on yeah yeah all right um okay so 25th anniversary um how are you preparing for this is there anything special that um uh, that the festival is preparing if you can if you can tell us um some details at this point well we 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 want to we need to survive first <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah of course to keep on, on working we are working uh, as I told you, as a, in a hybrid format, uh, the second semester, we think that maybe in August we'll be, we'll be having our, our festival. Uh, right now we are checking all the films from uh, the Berlinale, the from the, the EFM market screenings. And, um, well, we want, we want to make homage to some of the artists that were working with us from the very first uh, yeah from the very first edition of the festival. We are uh, talking, uh, for example, with uh, Jimena Cuevas and uh, Julian Hernandez, the director of uh, 1000 Clouds. And we are also very interested in screening the, the new films about uh, indigenous and, and, and queer, uh, and queer uh, characters in, yeah. in the new Mexican documentary, for example. I, I already told you about uh, Nudo Mixteco, which is uh, right. one of the great films. But for example, there's another one, which is Cosas Que No Hacemos, which already will be a part of the, of the festival this year. So, well, uh, these are some of uh, the, the secrets, which I hope uh, 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 keep between us. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And I mean, it's definitely something very exciting to look forward to. And when there is um, when there is an anniversary like this, it's also a, a good time to to reflect on on that whole journey that the that the festival took. Um, if you look back at this at these uh, twenty five years, then what would you say? What is at the core and what is the essence of your of your film festival what is really the soul of it which i, I well I, I think the soul of the of the festival is the films no we we at the uh, the beginning there was this uh difficult to find films to 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 find ourselves as a community in the screens right now uh uh, the the difficult let's say is to keep uh, this festival uh, as it has been you no know, as an independent festival uh, which is very interested in, in screening uh, queer films for queer audiences and to have uh, this uh, spirit and this uh, freedom uh, untouched yeah Great, Arturo, thank you so much uh, for being here with us today and uh, talking to us. It was very lovely and it was great to hear um, all the all, all the all your knowledge and all about the history of, of Mix. Um, so yeah, we first of all, we definitely wish a happy birthday to the festival um, and we wish you all the best for this uh, for this 25th edition. And we really hope that um, 
we will be able to see you very soon um maybe real life as well and yeah in the name of the entire teddy team i i thank you for being here with us today okay so thanks a lot uh, it was wonderful to talk to you and to be in and to be in the Berlinale yeah. in Mexico at the same time. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's one of the advantages again of, of an online festival that we can connect so nicely across the entire globe. Yeah, so thank you Arturo. Have a, have a, a lovely day for uh, for the rest of the day. I, I assume it's still morning in, in Mexico right now. And uh, yeah, so. 8 a.m. 8, 8 a.m. <laughs> oh, yeah, then, then you woke up very early for us. Thank you for that yeah. as well. Yeah, <laughs> have a nice day. Bye-bye. Thank you, Allah. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.